High right. Up. All right, that's it. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 88. Today we got another Milserp review for you. This is a very unique and special rifle that we're going to be talking about today. It's a 1904 Portuguese Mauser, and you're going to have to excuse me. I know I'm going to flub this fellow's name. Uh, it was designed by an infantry officer in Portugal named Jose uh, Figuero. Uh, I'm horrible with pronunci pronunciations, so you have to excuse me there. But anyway, very, very interesting gun. Uh, one of the most probably unique facts about the gun is it uses um, basically a, a split bridge action uh, that is more or less kind of uh, taken for like the Manlicker style uh, action or like maybe the Gewehr 88 uh, service rifle and it has Mauser bottom metal, so pretty unique. And um, it's kind of cool that a rifle like this would be designed by an officer, you know, because, uh, you know, maybe having a little bit of feedback from military uh, service and a little bit of feedback from what soldiers went through in the field in terms of service, it retains a lot of really interesting features about it that make it a very unique Mauser rifle. And not really a Mauser rifle, technically, because it's not a Mauser action. It's, it's kind of a modified Mauser action. Uh, the bottom is Mauser metal, more or less. You've got a hinged floor plate, so it doesn't drop free like a Mauser. So the magazine uh, floor plate kind of just is hinged, which is kind of interesting. And the bolt mechanism, you can see, is definitely very, very, very different than a standard Mauser rifle. It's got a few things that kind of nod to the Mauser, but more or less, more Gewehr 88 or Mannlicher Schoenhauer uh, style. And again, my pr pronunciation sucks. you have to excuse me. Um, this rifle was originally produced in a caliber known as uh, 6.5 by 58 uh, millimeters. So it was uh, kind of a little screaming 6.5 caliber uh, gun, which gave the, the rifle a very lightweight profile. Uh, this is kind of a short rifle, not really, a, you know, more of a carbine style, uh, sized rifle here. Um, another interesting feature of the gun that is extremely unique is the design of the front sight base. So if you pull this hood off, the front sight looks pretty much just like a standard Mauser rifle, but they designed this slip-on hood that just it basically gives it some ears. And the look of it, it almost looks exactly like a Finnish M39 or like a K31 service rifle. So you get this excellent protection for the front sight. And it also helps uh, you know, get rid of glare and things if you're out in the sun. So it just really helps you draw a nice, consistent uh, sight picture when you are sighting this particular rifle. Another unique feature, uh, this particular gun has been converted to 8mm Mauser. The early guns were in 6.5x58, uh, but this particular rifle, once Portugal adopted the uh, K98 in 1939, they wanted to standardize all of their infantry rifles over to 8mm. So what you'll see on the side of these rifles, you know, if you look, you'll see a crossed out area where it says 6.5 model 1904. Well, they crossed out the 6.5. And that's one way they let you know, hey, this thing's an 8mm. Um, so that's one of the interesting features uh, of the gun as well. And for the conversion process, one way you can also tell if, if your gun was converted or not is to look at the rear sight. Uh, the rear sight is kind of a K98 style rear sight. Uh, nothing really fancy to report there. But then you'll also see where they ground down the previous uh, sight graduations on the base uh, to the 8mm cartridge. Obviously, the 8mm probably maybe being a little flatter than the original ballistics of the 6.5x58, so it required them to change, of course, the trajectory of the rear sight for the 8mm cartridge. The fact that you've got an 8mm barrel in this gun makes the gun very lightweight. Uh, the stock design does have some relatively unique uh, attributes to it. There's some nice cartouches on it. We've got a uh, semi-pistol grip, which is kind of you know typical for what you're going to see. Uh, the upper handguard has kind of a, a humpback appearance to it, so that's one of the unique features of this rifle as well. And guys, these things will flat out shoot. As long as I can do my part, these things will generally uh, pit the ace, so to speak. Uh, it does feed from standard five round Mauser stripper clips, so that made uh, ease of use, you know, uh, d definitely apparent. You know, in 39 when they adopted the K98, 
uh, this rifle could be issued as well as a stopgap or rear D troops or whatever they wanted to do. And they could just be issued to standard service ammunition. And then there you go, the gun is, is good to go. Uh, it has a stripper clip notch in the rear uh, bridge here, the receiver. Very smooth operation. It loads just like a Mauser rifle should. Safety is located back here. It locks the bolt shut and prevents the gun from firing, which I'm not going to try because the gun's loaded. Um, but anyway, we're going to shoot it a little bit more. Uh, the gun's not running terribly bad. And uh, this is just meant to be a fun video to showcase a really interesting part of uh, Portugal's uh, military heritage and everything. It's a, it's a neat gun. Uh, this is a very unique uh, Mauser rifle. Uh, it's kind of a Mauser rifle and kind of not. It, it's kind of in between, okay? Uh, they were produced by, uh, by DWM in Berlin. Uh, so I would assume what would probably have happened there is Portugal designed the rifle, gave the, the factory the specs, the factory made the rifle. So it wasn't like a contract Mauser where the company could just go, yeah, I want a Model 1895 in this caliber, in this configuration with this barrel length, like ordering out of a catalog, you know, militaries could do that back then. Mauser made, and DWM and all of the other subsidiaries and factories made Mauser rifles for a bunch of different countries. And that's why Mauser rifles are such a popular collector's item because of the amount of contracts that are out there and different markings and everything. You know, this uh, gun retains a really nice crest uh, for the uh, King of Portugal, I'm assuming the King. We're gonna shoot the gun a little bit more. It's shooting pretty dang good, I think. Just gonna have a little fun. One of the most distinguishing characteristics of this rifle when you're behind the bench and shooting it, one, it's lightweight, so it kicks pretty hard, but accuracy, these things are highly accurate. What you going for? I'm gonna shoot 300. 300? 300. 300. All right. Um, eight inches under the plate down there in the dirt. Okay, I was bullseye maybe just a little bit too uh, aggressively. Let you me got try it set to... on. You got it set on three. I do. Okay. Still just right under it, slightly to the left. Right under it. Yep. Okay. Down there off at about seven o'clock. There you go. <clears throat> Right off the right side. Your favorite on the right side of the gong. Okay. I'll tell you what, just for fun, because of where this thing is hitting for me, I may need to adjust the sights just a bit. I'm going to try to hit that 8-inch popper over there on the right. All right. I know we're getting silly here. Yeah, give it a slightly left hold, and you should uh, sail it right in. The elevation's me... perfect. Whatever side picture you have. So. I'm going to try to bench rest her a little bit here. <clears throat> Oh, just to the left. Just to the left. <laughs> All right, let's do some more shooting here. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. What a smooth <laughs> load. What a smooth rifle. Wow. Buddy, these things are so cool. All right. And guys, in these videos, what we try to kind of do, we just shoot the dang gun, okay? We're not going to edit out misses. We're not going to edit out mistakes. We're just going to shoot the gun, have fun. That's the point of this video is to enjoy ourselves. And we hope that you're uh, having a little fun too and maybe learning something. All right, I'm gonna get that eight inch popper at 300 yards. Mm -hmm. There you go. A little low on it. Hit the skinny part. Skinny that's part? What you, that's what you were aiming for though, right? Just left again. Left? Yeah. Oh, uh, it is a small target. Mm -hmm. It's a 300 yard headshot with a 100 year old gun. You know, no big deal. No big deal. Same place, just left. Just left? Yep. <laughs> all right, all right. How about the gopher? Well, how about the gopher? How's he doing? Oh, he's fine. He's unscathed at the moment. Oh, and he's still unscathed. You went right past his belly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, these guns. Ah, <laughs> uh, you, you clipped the bottom edge of him on the right. <laughs> Hey, you know, I'll take it. Oh, that, that sound is so satisfying. Loading a Mauser rifle, buddy. Well, uh, one that actually loads right. One that actually loads. All right, how about the, um, how about the dang uh, coyote over there? And guys, we're trying to challenge ourselves a bit because we're doing some preliminary shooting and the gun is shooting 
pretty dang good at 300. We are probably going to take this gun up the hill and shoot it out to six. A little bit extended range for it. Uh, the ammunition we're using is M75 Yugoslavian uh, sniper ammo. So that helps a bit. Make Tell sure you what, you... why don't I, I try to just bench rest this thing and try to take my time and, and put a few on the gong and just see kind of what kind of group we're getting at 300. Yeah, go for it. Remember, you were hitting slightly right, um, but <laughs> that you're good. Still slightly right, but just keep sending them in. See if they get on the steel. You got it. What a smooth gun. Any idea where those five went? Yeah, you had um, you had a pretty good triangulation with your last four shots, uh, okay. and about maybe six inches. Hey, for a old bolt gun, I'll take that. But you had one shot that kind of hit a little bit high and right up there at two o'clock, opened okay. it up to about ten. Nice, not bad. No, not terrible. Hey, you know, for an old gun, I'll take it. Um, I know, you know, we always struggle with this coyote with mill syrups. You know, shooting a coyote because he's such a slender target that's very short not high off the ground so it's kind of difficult to establish a sight picture but we like to try to shoot the coyote because it's a challenge uh, these are all shootsteel.com gongs that we got out here and the gopher and the coyote really are my favorite i, I like playing with them uh, i'm just going to take a shot and and just see if i could shoot this coyote here some days the gopher plays with you yes he does all right got him right there center mass above his leg <laughs> Just in between his front legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about three shots for the half size D28 there at three? Three shots at three. All right. Good shot. Well, that rung loud. I don't know what you did there, but you uh, you pulled it over to the left quite a quite a bit. Yeah. There you go. You know, this gun is highly accurate, and really it's, it's more accurate than I am by a long shot. But uh, one of the interesting parts about this rifle too that I think is worth mentioning in the video is the sight picture is super fine. So the front sight post is pretty thin over uh, most other types of Mauser rifles. You don't really have that kind of like triangle shape like you see on the older K98s and some of the other service rifles. I mean, it's, it's more of an actual front sight post, similar to what you would see on a K31 or a Finnish M39. So um, the sighting arrangement is very accurate and consistent and makes for a really smooth shooting military uh, uh, type rifle. Uh, these guns are relatively uncommon. They're not exactly floating around uh, the place, so they're a little bit difficult to find. Uh, but they are uh, highly accurate, very smooth triggers, uh, smooth sights. I mean, just everything about it, just the bolt, super smooth, um, a very, very well put together Mauser variant that is uncommon and different. If you're the kind of guy that likes Mauser rifles and uh, you know maybe you have everything under the sun and you didn't know this existed, this is the kind of gun that maybe now you can get something that is uncommon uh, that you've never seen before. So I'll tell you what, um, the gun is shooting really well. Um, I could get Chad behind the gun here, but I think it's a waste of ammo. I think as good as this gun is shooting, uh, you know, I, I would say the gun is shooting well, not me, but as good as, good as the gun is, it seems to be doing, uh, Chad and I are going to take a little trip up the hill and take a few shots from 600, and uh, let's see what this uh, rifle can do out to a little bit longer range. All right, guys, we've uh, gone up the hill here. We're going to take a couple of shots with the Portuguese Mauser. Um, hopefully my explanation was adequate on uh, the particular history of this gun, uh, despite my uh, shortcomings of pronunciation. but will give me a little bit of a break on this one. We're gonna take some shots here with the same ammunition, same rifle, and uh, just have a little fun at some extended ranges. We're gonna shoot pretty much exclusively at 600 yards. It's the longest uh, range we have available here uh, at the farm. And uh, Chad's gonna spot and we'll swap out, do some shooting, have a little fun. Some shooting? Some shooting. Mm -hmm. I did notice earlier that this uh, particular rifle's had a toe repair on the stock. Mm -hmm, I saw that. Pretty cool. All right. 
Um, so the way we typically try to treat this is we just go for it. We don't edit out anything. Uh, we're just going to have some fun and shoot and get on the gong and uh, hopefully land some shots where we want them. Uh, Chad, I'm just going to set the sights to 600 and uh, just bullseye it. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Start there and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, let's just hope it's not, you know, three feet from the gong. We've never shot this rifle this far. This is the first time, so just go for it. Yeah, send it when you're ready. Wow. All right, so uh, good windage, perfect windage actually. You hit about uh, eight inches over the top of the plate, right there below the post or the, uh, you know, the cross member on the target stand. So high. Yep, yeah, about eight inches high, give or take. Sailed right in there, like right there below the, uh, the target stand cross member there, the plate's hanging from, if that makes sense. Sort of. I'm a horrible spotter. It's okay. I'm a horrible shooter. We make a good team. <laughs> yep, windage was all like right on the money. All right, that was about six or eight inches low. Still all right, perfect so, windage. <laughs> all right, so let's go back up to six. Just bullseye. And I'm just going to give it a, a a a little bit more deliberate bullseye. I would say put the uh, put the front post right down there where the dirt meets the grass, and you should sail it right in there, man. Yes, sir. Favoring on the uh, left side of the gong right there around 8 o'clock. Hit the very edge of it. Nice. <laughs> oh, man, this thing is great. Just low. All right, that first string's not too bad, kind of getting us on the target here. We're gonna try again. I've heard a lot about these Portuguese Mausers really delivering the goods, and so far they seem to be shooting fairly well. We've had the wind pick up on us, but you know, we're not gonna cry about it, we're just gonna shoot. That big old eight millimeter pill will get on down oh, there. Oh, it will. It'll punch right on down there. So you're still keeping that bullseye under the target? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea where that one went, unless it went right over the top and hit behind the gong. All right, let me get, bring it down just a hair. I'm kind of in that purgatory area between sight settings where we're gonna have to kind of play around here a little bit. Sight purgatory. All right, that was just left. Just left? Yep. That's odd, just okay. left. All right. Well, the wind is blowing right to left, so. I'm gonna yeah. give it just a bit of hold then. Sure. Yep. Favoring on the uh, left side of the gong. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm holding about a foot off the gong. Yeah. Yeah, you favor on the left uh, around 10 o'clock, give or take. Yep. Boy, that was a good center mass shot right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, if you were armed with this, you had you a good rifle back then. All right, is that wind still blowing? Uh, it died down just a tiny bit. All right, I'm not gonna hold quite as much then. <laughs> Off the left at nine o'clock. <laughs> Off the left, okay. <laughs> Maybe that wind's blowing harder than we thought. I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna keep that other hold then. Yeah, we've See got we like can... pockets of wind with the tr where the trees are down here. Woo, them bluebirds almost got it. Where'd it hit? Uh, off the right at three o'clock. Oh, okay, so the wind must have died down. Yeah, <laughs> there were some bluebirds that like flew right in the bullet path. <laughs> she nice. shot. <laughs> yep. Well, them birds are getting out of here. <laughs> Man, this sucker just slings them bullets right in there. I love it. It's shooting good. Yeah, it is. Oh, just off at seven o'clock on the left side there. That wind is just not cooperating. Hold a little bit more then. 
I tell you what, if it wasn't for that wind playing with us, though, those rounds would be going right in there, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's see. Of course, when you shoot, the wind won't be blowing. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes. Yeah, it is. Uh, that may have gone like right behind the gong. I didn't see a splash. Very neat. This is cool. Does it feel like the winds died down a bit? Maybe it's still, a, it's still blowing down range. I mean, is it? Yeah, I see that grass. Right moving. to left. Still a little bit right to left, and yeah, probably like five mile an hour wind. Much. Right over the top. Over the top of the plate. Yep. Good windage. Good windage. Yeah, perfect windage. Okay. Now we got the wind blowing in our face. <laughs> yep. It keeps changing for sure. You got it. <laughs> um, high left, 10 o'clock. Gotcha. I'll take it. It's on there though. You got it. I couldn't tell. I, I saw a little bit of movement right there, kind of high left, up there near the uh, hangar. Gotcha. Maybe yeah, might have right hit the hangar. The uh, I tell you what. I mean, in terms of accuracy, I know the wind's playing with us a little bit, but I would, I would definitely pit this against a K31 any day. Shoots good. I really would. Well, those sights are a heck of a lot better than most miles. Yes, I've ever they tried. are. All right, one for the road. Come on, last round. Got him. It's a satisfying sound. I'll take it, man. It's so satisfying. Dude, I'm telling you, you got to shoot this thing, man. You're going to love it. I will give it a try. Give it a try. We're going to let it cool down a little bit and let Chad have a go, see how this gun can shoot. All right, I'm going to take a few shots of the old Portuguese girl here and see what we can do. Remember when we talked about the wind dying down, so no wind right now. Murphy's Law, though, you know. Oh, what a smooth rifle. Yeah, Chad, um, I guess just... Go ahead and bullseye right under the plate, and let's just see where the round goes. Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody sees the sights a little different. They you know? do, and I was I was having to hold, you know, kind of off and low and to the right for to accomplish, you know, for the wind, mm -hmm. compensate for the wind. But well, now the wind's picked up. <laughs> it's okay. But just take give a, a shot, shot and see where we are. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna send one. You feel like you're behind a K31? Man, those sights, you know, I mean, they're right on line with them. Right over the top of the gong, Chad. Just give it a little bit more bullseye. Okay. Good windage. There you go. It looks like it is drifting the bullet a bit to the left, but you do have some crosswind down there. Just keep the same hold and I'll let you know if you're hitting off the left or not. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You're hitting about on the, the left third of the plate. Okay, that time it hit, uh, looks like high and right, maybe about three inches off the edge of the plate. Yeah, that's how a lot of your shots were. They were kind of spreading open, you know, but or were you shooting at 100 yards, about two um, inches? Yeah, we, we were shooting maybe some two-inch groups. Mm -hmm. Some might have been slightly under two inches at 100 yards. Well, what I, like about, what I like about these sights is you got a nice wide U groove on the rear side here, and you got a lot of space between the front sight and the edges of the rear sight, so you can really get that front post centered up in there nice. And I don't know, I just I prefer the, the flat top sights compared to the, like the triangular Mauser sights like Eric was talking about earlier on most of the older, other like Mauser type rifles, you know. Yep. So far so good. I'm I'm satisfied. <sighs> uh, uh low and left about an inch off the plate. Okay. So you're you're right in there, pretty much like I was. Yep. <sighs> good shot. 
boy, listen to that. <laughs> that eight millimeter hits that plate pretty hard. It does for sure. Oh yeah. So will this stripper clip pop out of here? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It may have fallen. Well, it didn't fall off the tower. That's oh. all right. You won't find a smoother bolt than that. Other oh than man. Maybe a crag. It's super smooth. I could hear it when I was filming earlier, just behind you, spotting at 300 yards. Yep. Man. You missed off the left edge of the plate by about three inches. 10 4. Your last two shots are probably within about four inches of each other. Mm -hmm. That would keep a soldier's head down. Yes, it would. I think the wind is catching you a bit. That uh, appeared to hit under the plate. Oh, weird. It's a long way, man. Good shot. Pretty Lower, fair trigger. Uh, right quadrant of the plate. Okay. Yeah, the trigger on this thing, it's got a little bit of staginess to it to get to kind of the second stage, but boy, it breaks really nice. Not bad at all. Not bad yeah, this, at all. Yeah, this is what happens when you actually let military people design guns, oddly <laughs> enough, you know? Oddly enough. Yeah, you get a gun that a soldier actually wants to use. I would have used it. Heck yeah. Uh, low and right, about an inch, Chad. You're barely missing. Okay. Is that where my misses were, like just right off the edge of yep. the gong? Yeah, a lot of them were right, right off the edge, like at 10 o'clock and then like at 2 o'clock and just yeah. all around, just literally barely missing. Yeah, it's shooting good. That might have went over the gong. I couldn't really tell from this angle. Hard to tell. Yeah, not bad. Ooh, it stayed on the tower. <laughs> hmm. Guys, to be fair, one of the things that we're looking for in these types of uh, videos, when we're shooting things at long range, sometimes it's not necessarily whether or not we're hitting the target. We're looking at the consistency of the gun. We're trying to show where the shots are landed in relation to what we're trying to do. I mean, we could adjust the sights out perfectly and get every little round right where we want, but... It's always fun to hit the gong, but you don't have to to show how consistent the gun can be. Mm -mm. Not at all. That's what the camera's for. Good shot. Yeah, just keep that hold. Right on the bottom edge of the gong, Chad. Just bring your hold up just a, just a hair. All right, now that was right over the top of the gong, so just cut it in half, whatever you did. Oh, I may have pulled that one to the right. Yep. It, it's, you know, guys, it can be really difficult to hold at this distance. There's not a lot of room for error with this kind of thing. No, oh, I'm just sailing them in there at this point. <laughs> just for fun. I would shoot the 8-inch popper or try to, but I can't even see it. Yeah, it's hard to see. Man. Uh, you probably hit right over the top of the plate. I couldn't see the splash. Same spot. Dang it. Might be getting a little warm, too. Good shot. Good center mass hit right there. Right under the plate. Good shot. I'll finish out with that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I tell you what, I like Mausers and everything, but this one is definitely a unique variant for sure. And uh, very lightweight, smooth shooting. I'd love to shoot one of the original 6.5. Yeah, we'll, we'll, That'd be I think neat. we'll, we'll make that happen. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we just bring you guys along for the ride when we go up here to the tower and uh, shoot these old girls at the long range and just see what they can do. And tell you what, one excellent shooting Mauser right here, especially when you feed it some good food. Um, something about this M75 ammo, real quick before I let you go, is 
this stuff is extremely corrosive. Uh, definitely clean your guns afterwards, shoot some Windex down there, some hot water and soap, and then you know, finish it out with a, uh, a good oily patch or whatever, because we had a couple of Mausers that were <laughs> a little bit on the skanky side. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, we got a ton more military surplus uh, stuff coming down the pipeline. Until next time, you guys take care.